Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Katie Huff with Setting Yourself Free podcast, where we encourage you to be, do, and have all that you were created to be and not let anything set you back. So I am excited. I have one of my greatest mentors that I have been following for the last two years. He's unbelievable, all the things that he's accomplished. Some of you may or may not know of Clay Clark, who is and was the U.S. SBA Entrepreneur of the Year. He has a podcast. He's written 13 plus books. He has the Thrive Time Show. He has the Reawaken America Tour. And he's the number one fan of Bill Bilicek. I mean, where do you start with a man like this? And so I would just say, welcome, 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 Clay. I'm so excited to hear how how you've been able to do all this. And so um, I would say, who are you and where did you come from? Uh, okay. Who am I? Uh, I'm a, a father of five kids. Uh, I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma with my incredible uh, wife and five kids. Um, I grew up uh, poor. I think some people grew up, grew up more poor. Uh, I think some people grew up less poor, but you know, yellow box, generic food, my dad delivered pizzas and worked at quick trip gas stations to put food on our table. And I'm very appreciative for the sacrifice he made poor. That's how we grew up. Um, and uh, I just decided at a very young age, probably I, I stuttered a lot as a kid. So when you stutter, you spend a lot of time by yourself unless you want to get perpetually made fun of. So I had a lot of time you know, thinking I, I would draw a lot, sketch a lot. I still do that sketch and draw a lot. And I started thinking about, you know, what do I want my life uh, to be like? And uh, what I really dreamed out is now what I'm doing. So I'm doing that, which I dreamed out at a young age. So I I'm living the life of my dreams, I guess I would say. Which is awesome. And I think that being said, it's like you had a vision, you had a thought and you've worked to accomplish that. And so when it comes to how I met you, it was two years ago when you were talking about the reawaken tour, when all kinds of things were happening in our in our country, and I wanted to come to your Tulsa first event. wasn't mm -hmm. able to make that, but I did make it to Dallas. And and uh, you have a business school that has been just epic because of all of the success that you've had. So there's a lot of business coaches out there. Clay, and I have um, partnered with some of them, but I've never had the results that I have had with Clay Clark's business school. So what would you say sets you apart from all the rest? Well, um, I run uh, my own companies. And so I think um, that is a, maybe a different thing than than many other coaching programs. A lot of, um, I'll, 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 let me just explain my model. Um, I charge people $1,700 a month. So one seven zero zero per month. And uh, I operated a 20% profit margin. So people who've been my clients for 10 years, remember when I was crazy, I used to charge people four and $5,000 a month and it was just me. So it was 20, uh, 2005. And I'd built a very successful company called djconnection.com. It had scaled. I had built the wedding show, the big Tulsa wedding show. I had built a party rental company and just everything was working. And people would call me, the fathers of the bride, and the brides would call me and go, hey, you know, I have a business. Could you help me grow my business? And I'm going, uh, what do you mean? And they go, well, I mean, can I pick your brain? And I started talking to a few people in my life who are very successful and probably 15 years older. And they said, why don't you charge people to teach them how to grow their company? I go, said, well, I don't want to. And I already have a very successful company. So I, I don't know that I want to, but, um, and, and so it kept happening. People would reach out saying, can I pick your brain? Can I pick your brain? Can I, could you help me? And so I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say yes. And so I worked with a small bridal store and an insurance company and a uh, Maytag University and UPS stores and different businesses. And uh, they all grew just dramatically. And uh, I thought, well, um, that went well. Should probably keep doing that. And so that happened in 2005-ish. And now here we are, 2023. And uh, I, I many have said that I've coached more millionaires than anybody. I don't know if that's true. I think Chet Holmes coached quite a few of them. But I've I have helped to build thousands of millionaires. And if you go to thrivetimeshow.com and you click on the testimonials button, I believe right now we have 2000 client success stories up there that are on video. So wow. you can see their success. And so I am, am very good at what I do. Not good at everything, but very good at growing comp companies. I understand how to do it. It's um, not a theory to me. It's very practical. I know the steps. So people hire me essentially to kind of paint by numbers 
or to do like a bumper bowling where you can't get a gutter ball. Uh, so I basically help people have success. And because I only charge $1,700 a month, um, it's it's very affordable for most business owners. And uh, where I make most of my wealth is I ask for a small percentage of the growth. And most of the times I can work on that with a business owner. So as an example, one of my clients right now, uh, this particular month, uh, we've he, we grew his business from a very very small business, Katie, uh, to the point where he's just booming. In this month, my two and a half percent commission for that business has already passed a hundred thousand dollars for that one business, of which I have many other that I work on. So, wow. just as an example of scaling, I mean, here's a guy whose business was not doing well. Another guy I talked to today, a longtime client, a PMHOKC. That's his company, PMHOKC. Uh, he was in Cancun today. His company did $400,000 of sales this week. He does outdoor living, kitchens, remodeling. When I first met him, um, he would do $400,000 every six months. And now he did $400,000 this week. Wow. And that's PMHOKC. So again, um, and then if you get a small percentage of the growth, that's a true win-win. I think that's really the relationship you should have if you're out there and you want to be a business consultant or any business owner. You really do want to create win-win relationships. Absolutely. And you've got quite the laundry list of different types of businesses that you've helped from the one you just explained. Is there a specific business that wouldn't work, do you think? Or what What would you say to someone if they're questioning, well, is Clay yeah. Clark's business school good enough for what I'm wanting to do. Like, for instance, you know what I'm doing. I'm doing a ministry. I've written a book. I'm wanting to podcast and obviously yeah. wanting to learn for you. So what? Well, what you're, you? you are what you do is is what I would normally not do. I would not normally work with people like you. Why I wanted right. to work with you is because um, I like you. Um, I've met you. I believe in what you're trying to do. And I know it can be done. But normally, I just like to work with businesses that are very uh, that I see as immediately as very scalable. So let me give an example. Um, if you have a problem, step one, there's four steps to entrepreneurship, by the way. There's a lot of details, but there's four steps. Step one, you have to find problems that people want to have solved. So right. um, one of my clients right now, they install decorative fencing, farm fencing, fencing, fencing. So people, it turns out people want their dogs to not run away, their cows to not run away, and they want to build a fence. So they're, they're a fencing company. So the problem is that the problem they solve is people want, people need a fence. The solution is they build the fence. So step one, find the problem. Step two, solution. Step three, you have to be able to sell it. The fencing company I work with, great, great people, by the way, they um, have determined that people are willing to pay to have a fence built because they don't know how to build the fence or they don't want to build the fence or they don't have the, the skills to build the fence. Another example, problem. One of my clients is uh, he helps people remove brush from their property. The problem is people have a beautiful piece of land and they have a lot of trees that have fallen down and they want to remove the brush. That's the problem. The solution is brush busters can go out there. That's the name of the company. It's called brush busters. Let me see if I can pull up their website, brush busters. The, the problem is most people don't have the equipment needed to remove said brush. And so what happens is they just look at the brush and they think, I would like to remove the brush. So problem, brush, solution, remove the brush. It's brushbusterslandclearing.com. Step three, the solution, will people be willing to pay for it? Well, it turns out people are willing to go to brushbusterslandclearing.com and hire them to bring out this massive machine that mulches down and removes um, trees that have fallen down. And then step four, you want to nail it and scale it. So in your business, what's challenging about it is the problem. A lot of women, a lot of men are dealing with um, alignment issues where their goals don't align with what they're doing on a daily basis. Uh, they have cognitive dissonance because they feel stuck in a rut and they need that alignment, that recalibrating. And I see that as a problem. And I know that's a solution that you can provide. The third thing that you step three, though, is you have to sell the solution. And you got, you have phenomenal workshops and in-person trainings that you do, and you've already done them before. Right. If you hadn't have done them, I, I would not have taken you on because um, a lot of people want to put on a workshop, but they don't know the detail that goes into it. Oh yeah. And it's a it, lot of work yeah, managing is. the personalities and the venue. And I know that you pride yourself on having a class A experience where people have a wonderful time and all the details are taken care of. And so when I heard when we were talking and you told me about the level of details you put into it and you've gone through the struggles of organizing events, I knew that you could do it. And step four is you want to scale it. And I think that's really what we're working on with you is scaling yeah. it. 
But someone who reaches out to me and says, I want to start a workshop and I've never done it before. My advice to them would be, we'll go to thrivetimeshow.com, come to one of our workshops yes. and we let people name their price. So you can, we tell people it's $250 or whatever price you want to pay. And I would tell people start at a workshop of ours um, by coming to one of our in-person workshops, as opposed to taking them on, on as a coaching client. Cause I only take on 160 clients because I really do like to know everybody and, and try to develop as much of a relationship as you can have with 160 great people. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, um, I've been to your business school a couple different times. I keep coming back because there's always something to learn. But what would you say to the audience to encourage them what they're going to get when they come to the Thrive Time Business School? Well, I think one is it's going to be, you know, everyone has like a grandpa or an uncle or a teacher or someone in your life who would call it as they see it based upon facts. And they weren't focused on your feelings. They were more focused on your success. And if you haven't had that person, we all need that person. I think everybody needs that co that coach, that mentor, that teacher, that mom, that dad, somebody who will tell you when you have ketchup on your face or who Absolutely. will tell you when you're uh, in the error or you're not being, uh, you're not moving towards your goals. Um, and our conferences are very unapologetic in that way. Um, the second exactly. thing is that they're as interactive as you want it to be. Um, when you came to the workshop uh, and other people come to the workshops, I try to be very intentional at our business workshops to cap the attendance at about 150 people. So if you want to ask questions, it's the only workshop I've ever seen where the you you as an attendee can ask the questions and the questions are answered. Where oh. most workshops I've been to, there are so many people that no one gets to ask questions or the uh, personality is so obsessed with themselves that they never answer questions. So uh, I like that ours, you can ask you can ask questions. And if you don't want to be called on, you don't have to ask questions. I don't bring people up without their permission. Um, and then third is I would say that you're surrounded by people that are, I would say maybe a third of the people who are in attendance are active clients that have had massive success. And so it helps sometimes to hear the story of somebody that you look at and go, maybe you're saying to yourself, well, they're not that impressive. Or you maybe you're thinking, wow, they're very impressive. I don't know how you process exactly. it, but to meet real people, sometimes we have those thoughts of like, wow, if they could do it, I could do it too. Exactly. And you almost want to touch them and meet them and go, are you, is this real? What do you do? And how did you, you know, how did you optimize your website and how did you write your book and how did you, so it's a really interactive thing. And then we serve food both days, a lot of camaraderie. We take a break every 40 minutes so you can network. Um, because why I'm always serving ridiculous food and there's a fun little white waterfall and some kind of fun areas to walk around. You know, you might pet a goat, pet a llama, meet a friend, set something on fire. It's just a lot of fun. I remember taking a helicopter ride one time. That's, yes. that's big. And I do that all the time. I'm always booking a hel helicopter rides where I'm booking, um, uh, uh, you know, llamas and goats. To, I was just, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, there's areas like a, a, I have mariachi bands that perform yes. from time to time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then also I have a, I, I try to live stream a music at the events or bring in live music. And we're going to have um, a, a live musical performance from the group that has performed at multiple of our conferences. They'll be live streaming on our Thrive Time Show Rumble.com channel on next week. And so you can get a little sneak peek for sneak peek of the audio ambiance. Yeah. So tell them again what that um that where they find that and can witness yeah. live music. Yeah. Again. You go to rumble.com and you search for Thrive Time Show. And they're going to be live this Monday, the 20th, from 3 p.m. to 6 uh p.m. And there there it's a group of musicians that I have found that are assembling into a band. And they're very talented, and it's almost like the BBC Live Lounge, but not the deep state nature of it. And uh, I think everybody out there would love it, but you can tune in on Rumble.com for free. Uh, just go to search for Thrive Time Show on the 20th, which is February 20th, and we'll be streaming live from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on the 20th. Which is awesome. And I will say this, to his point, uh, when you come there and you get to ask your questions, what I would just tell everyone that's listening is that it's not about – Clay and his staff as much as it is, is it's all about us. It's all about what we need to do to move to the next level and understand what the steps are. And to be able to ask those questions is critical because like you said, in some of these places, you sit there and you might even raise your hand and you don't get called on because there's other people, but we get to write it on the board. He is intentional about taking it from step one to step two. So we walk out of there having the ammunition that we need to be able to move the needle in our business, which is amazing. So I am grateful and thankful for you. One thing, 
I, I want to interject real yes. quick about that. Um, if anybody out there has ever gotten in really, really great physical shape, you usually will have a personal trainer that you work out with or, or a group you class you go to, or is there some, there's usually somebody kind of going down the journey with you. Um, if you're ever wanting to not die and you also want to do whitewater rapids, like if you want to do the whitewater rapids and not die, you're like, well, I want to do the whitewater rapids, but I don't want to die. If that's what you also want, you want both things. You want to have the whitewater rapids experience and not die. Usually you have a tour guide guiding you down the path, uh, guiding you down the, 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 the stream, the river, um, if you're going to climb to the top of a mountain summit, typically you have a Sherpa or a guide or a hiking right. leader because you don't want to die. And in business, for whatever reason, people um, don't have a guide and going down a, and running a business is a lot like going into the rapids. And when you go into the rapids and you don't have a guide, and you don't know what you're doing. You can quickly uh, run into rocks and fall out of the boat and, you know, and, right. you end up, and you, right. it, it doesn't have to be that painful. So I would encourage anybody out there, if you're trying to fix your accounting, hire an accountant. If you're out there trying to get into shape, hire a personal trainer. If you right. want to grow your business, I would recommend you would have a business consultant, um, but just don't go down the river, the raging ripper of ri ri river of entrepreneurship and get slammed into the rocks because right. it's so much easier if you have a consultant, regardless of whether it's me or not. That's that's a fact. And instead of being the absent-minded wanderer, you get on a on a path with someone who's your guide and is going to help you to accomplish all that you were created to be. Because obviously God put those desires in you. And we as consultants, and especially Clay and his team, they want us to have success and they do all they can for us. So let's change um, channels if we can't. You're... I consider you the king of podcasts. Hmm. How did you get started, and what are the steps, and you know what are the what are the things that well, you track? Um, I today can I do a screen share? Can I share a screen? Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a there's some sort of button where you allow me access, and then I can just share something real quick here, just yes. to show. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, boom. So I'll just show people what I do or don't do, so it gives a little meat to it. Um, if you go here to uh, Rumble.com. And uh, you search for uh, uh, you just do a search for Thrive Time Show. You can find um, my show. Let me see Thrive Time Thrive Time Show, and hopefully you can see it. Can you see the the the, the show there? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, I'll just walk people through it. You know, today I've put out one show, two show, three, so four shows, five, six in the last um, twenty four hours. All right. wow. So what you'll do when you make a show is step one, you want to have like a compelling intro. So here's my intro. I'm drinking warm water before I'm bed. Drinking warm water. So this is a commercial. Here we go. Let me hit play. People and healing the people. So this is my intro. Time show. Everyone needs an intro. We'll show you how to get you started from the bottom. Now we started from the bottom. Now we Started from the bottom, now we're on the top, teaching you the systems to give what we got. Clinton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. He's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we hit. I always want to have an intro. Yeah, and it's very engaging and very upbeat, which is awesome. And then I like to, I like to, you don't have to, but I like to, I recommend everybody has an outline of what you're going to talk about before you talk about it. So this particular show I did was about why everybody um, needs testimonials, reviews, case studies, mm -hmm. and maybe even a hype man. Um, and I made this video years ago uh, when I was doing public speaking, because I thought that a lot of times the person introducing me would jack up the intro. So I made something kind of funny. So. Okay, Brian, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, Clay Clark introduction voiceover, take one, whenever you feel it, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, today's speaker is the founder of Thrive15.com, the former United States Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year, a contributing writer for Entrepreneur Magazine, and the author of four books. He started his first business out of his college dorm room and was named as the Metro Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year at just age 20. How's that feeling in there? Not bad. Not great. It's actually pretty terrible. Uh, <laughs> could you bring more sizzle? Okay. 
Okay, sure. And whenever you feel it. Because so in the speaker world, a lot of speakers are like, oh, my intro wasn't good enough. Could you say it like this? Could you say it? And I, I met a lot of speakers who would kind of complain about the way they were introduced. And I thought, I'm going to have some fun with that. It's that time. He and his companies have been featured for That's awesome. Nintendo Daily, Yahoo Finance, Bloomberg, and countless publications. He has been the entertainer and educator of choice for some of the world's largest companies, including Newlet Packard, Val Sparpay, Oxy Fresh, Maytag University, Boeing, Farmers Insurance, and many cut, others. Cut, 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 cut. This isn't working. Uh, I could, I could liven it up maybe with like a British accent or clay clock, matey, shrimp on the bobby. You have to stop. It needs more energy. It needs more flow. I think only one man can help us. Bring in Randall, the hype man. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. So when you when you you know when you're a listener to a show and you are aware that the person presenting took the time to prepare notes for the show. Hey Marty, you got to come in here Marty. Marty come in. When when somebody uh sees that you spent the time to prepare for the show, you got to get a chair to get a chair. Then they they <laughs> feel more appreciated because they feel like, wow, you actually took the time to prepare what you're saying and it's not just random opinions. This is Marty by the way, and Marty happens to be here. Hi Marty. Marty. Marty, you've been a, a client. We worked with you for for how many years? How many dark, just dark and terrible years of well, where have you been stuck with me? Five <laughs> years of darkness and the last year of light. So, six oh. years. Yeah. and Marty actually just how the work worked out. Marty actually has a, a podcast too that's growing dramatically. Yeah, and you launched it this year. What is your podcast? Um, well, so my, it's basically a life, liberty, and loudmouth prayer. Yeah, where, where can people find that? So they go to loudmouthprayer.org. Uh, and then they click on start praying today. And from that, uh, it takes them to where we'll get all the information sent to them. But we're on Rumble, YouTube, Facebook. Just look for Loudmouth Prayer. So, again, Marty's a roofer, right? Marty's a roofer, had a lot of success as a roofer, still has success as a roofer. And he feels called to do uh, more and share the gospel. And so if you're listening today and you're going, well, how do I make a show? One, have an intro. Okay. Stu uh, two, take the time needed to prepare. All right. Step three, you got to have a call to action. And Marty, this is the one thing I was busting Marty's chops about for a long, longest time. He would do a great presentation. Yeah. And then he would forget to mention his website three times. Uh, exactly. Because yeah. the people who are listening to your show, a lot of times listen while they're driving. Right. And he would nail it. Yeah. And then he would get off the stage and people would come to you. This actually happened. They would, they'd say, that guy's hilarious. What was, what was Mark's name? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, it's Marty. <laughs> or what was Mark, Mark Grish? What was his name? Grizzly? Grizzly? Yeah. And I'm going, <laughs> what so, prayer? So, so, but now you say it three times, right? Yeah. Loudmouthprayer.org. Please go there and click on start praying today. And it, it, but he would, so again, you got to have an intro. Okay. You got to have the content you prepare. Three, a strong call to action. Those yeah. are, that's kind of the components there. Yeah. Um, And then I like working. I enjoy it. So I'm always, tweaking it's sort of my world workshop but th that's and, and, and marty's the same way he's always trying to get a different guest on his show or you know trying to take it to the next level um and then the final component is you want to have a way for people to sign up to your to your thing yeah to connect with your thing um i i don't view it as a funnel i view it as what i call a relationship some people call it a funnel i call it a relationship but basically it's very hard for somebody to want to trust you if they don't know you Right. And so if you do a show that's free and you say, go to boomboom.com and s sign up today for my newsletter, um, we would love to stay in touch. And you actually humble yourself and take the time to call somebody. Yeah. Uh, Marty, when people go to loudmouthprayer.org? Uh, dot, dot yeah, dot .org, yeah. You call them. I call them. Now, I've had about nine, 10,000 people join me. What did you hear he just said? How many people? Nine to 10,000 people in the last six months. And so Holy. So you call nine to ten thousand people. I've called about three thousand. I'm behind, but it's only so many. And every time, you, and every time yeah. you call them, how, how do they react to it? A lot of them uh, get tears in their eyes. They're shocked. One of them said to me, uh, "We've been sick. We've been down with cancer. Mm. We've been in the hospital. Our pastor never called. We've been under that pastor for forty years. Why are you calling me?" So right now, today, this is just a real thing. I'm just going to share. Share. I can't. I'm not going to give away their their contact information. But I'm looking <laughs> at my email, Marty. And you see here, this is one person here. I'm just showing so you can see it. Yeah. We have David and Sandra yeah. that just reached out. Uh, 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 hey, Sarah. She thinks she's in there. So we'll see if she <laughs> Did you already reach David yes. and Sandra? Yes. Did you already book meetings with them? Ha-ha, see? That's yeah. how it should work. So I'm going to do this. From the, so, the, so what you do is once people fill out the form, you have great people like Sarah. Did you already call Carol? 
Do you get a hold of Carol? Well, I didn't get a hold of her, but I did call her. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and every time Sarah books an appointment, she bangs the cowbell, so I know that it happened. That's what I need in my nice. life. But I'm just saying is, Poor that's cowbell. how it should work. So you yeah. do the intro, you do the show, yeah. call to action, and then someone on your team has to call them. And not everybody has somebody like Sarah to, to do that. So when we first started telling, selling tickets to the Reawaken America Tour, I called the leads myself. Yeah. Marty and his wow. wonderful wife called, and they said, could we help? Remember the night before yeah. the event? You were on yeah. the phone calling people? Came up here and called, for sure. So, I mean, th this is the problem. And for some reason, I don't know what it is, and maybe you could work <laughs> with me on this, people don't want to call their leads. Yeah. And people sure. don't want to offer a free consultation. And I think it's a, it comes across, this is my take, as selfish to the listener. If you're saying, hey, I want you to come to my workshop or buy my thing. Mm -hmm. If you're so awesome, they can't reach you. That's how I feel. You know, the number one thing I hear when I call, the number one thing I hear more than anyone else, they answer the phone and they say, Marty, I'm still watching you right now. There it is. <laughs> That's how quickly we call them. That's, That's awesome. it's Over and over. So hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. It does. And what's even, that was my next question is how many times is too many times to be emailing and reaching out? To, uh, uh, if, if they fill out your form? Yeah. So, if, okay. If a person fills out the form on my website, so if a listener fills out the form on your website, my professional uh, advice would be call every lead until they cry, buy, or die. Yeah. Amen. Call every lead until they cry, buy, or die. Well, what does that mean? Cry means stop calling me. <laughs> that happened yesterday. True story. A lady says, Oh, wow. You got a guy up there. So, so I call this lady and she says, Upper Northeast, by the way, this lady. She's, I can't believe your guy calls me all the time. And I, I could just picture her saying this. But she, he calls me all the time. James calls me all the time. All this pressure. And I'm going, well, how many times did he call? I don't know, like five times. I just wanted a ticket to the reawaken to, uh, and I was going, well, uh, did he call you five times a day? She said, yes. And I go, well, he needs to be calling you more. I tell you what, did he get you a ticket? No. Well, let's get you a ticket. Answer the phone. Answer the phone. So I mean, I would, and then die is like, you know, are they dead? Yeah, yeah. Now if someone gets they answer the phone, they go, "It's a tough time here, uh, Marty. Sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Smith has passed away." Then if you're a skilled salesperson, you'd say, "I'm sorry about the loss. Um, are you looking to buy a ticket to my workshop?" Does he have a read? <laughs> I mean, you have to sort of just have that. One. You have to. You okay. gotta, I mean, you, get, you gotta move on. So cry, buy, and then buy so they buy something. But that's if they fill out your form. Now, if they didn't fill out your form, I don't recommend calling people until they cry or die. I have yeah, right. Might go to jail if you do that. I have a friend I talked to a while back. I said, "How's your website doing?" I just saw that you had so many. He said, "Yeah, I had seven thousand people go to my website." Uh -huh. I said, "How many did you click?" He said, "I didn't." I said, "Why not?" He said, "Well, I don't have no button for them to join us." Crazy, crazy, crazy. So those are hopefully that answers your question. I I think we have time for one more question, Katie. And thank you for for fitting me in your schedule today. I really oh my gosh, it. it's been just a wealth of knowledge. So what KPIs do you track? Because you teach us, you show us, we do it, and we review it. So oh, what for, are we for tracking? me? Mm -hmm. For me, uh, okay. If you can picture it in your mind, this is what I track, and this is the rules. Okay, and Marty does this too. One is you only want to measure what you treasure. Wow. So there's a lot of people in my life that I haven't given permission to give me feedback. Okay. That for a second. And they love to give feedback though. Marty, I'm sure you hear this. Yes. They'll call and go, Marty, your, your show, I, you, know, you would be on fire if you would just start posting your shows on Apple, on iTunes. You yeah. would be reach more people. Yeah. And I just want you to know. And also it's the way you're so energetic. I don't think you're taking the gospel seriously enough. Do you ever hear these things? Oh, every single day. Okay. So what I don't, don't track that kind of stuff. I would recommend you track a track. How many shows you record a day? I personally commit to doing a show every single day. That's a discipline I do every day. Today I've done four, but most days it's just one. So that I'm producing, I'll be on other people's shows, but I'm saying shows that I'm making for my listeners yeah. one a day. So you got to track. Okay. Marty, you like to track. Why is it important yeah. to track how many shows you're going to do a week? Why is that an important conversation for you, your wife, for everyone around you yeah. to know how many shows you're going to do a week? Um, when you do know how many, well, the, well okay. So, Clay called me about four months ago and said, Marty, he's, and Clay Clark is almost like Doc Brown on Marty McFly, Back to the Future. He said, Marty, real quickly, I got to tell you, consistency, <laughs> Marty. And yeah. Then he hung up. And so two days later, the Holy Spirit said to me, listen to Clay. So I started a consistent show every day. And that's mm. where we exploded because mm. people want to know when to find you and they want to know what content and they will consistently come back every single day and they'll tell their friends and you create this community. And wow. that's what's happened.
with the everyday. So one is you got to do that. You track how many shows that you're recording. Two is how many shows are you on? It's really important discipline that you're on. You get on one show a day that's not your show and one show a day that is your show. And uh, we, I was on a show yesterday, Marty, and I'm sure this has never happened to you. I was on a show yesterday and the host, I don't know what's going on with this guy. This guy had some problems. <laughs> and he was manifesting his problems and sharing them on the show. So he's like, uh -oh. I don't know what's going on. I can't get the link to work. Let me try to. Have you ever seen this? Yeah, yeah. I'll he's like, here. so I want to just add you. Let me try to add you. Just, just <laughs> can't get the link to work. What do you want to talk about? He reached out to me to have me on his show. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and he's like, well, I just, whatever. Just, oh, God. And the whole show is muttering. So I made it as a discipline, it's a practice. I made myself bring it because he was not. Yeah. Very one sided yeah, conversation. Right. So you got to, how many shows are you on? How many shows do you want? How many shows did you produce? How many shows are you on? I, I would recommend one a day we start. Third is how many people filled out your form? Marty has had 10,000 people go to loudmouthprayer.org, right? Yeah. Fill out the form, yeah. which in my opinion, this is an opinion now. This is not a fact because this is very, there's a lot of information here. I, in my opinion, believe that's a great, phenomenal top 2% type of response. Yeah. But somebody else might say, well, I, I started my podcast. And I had 100,000 people that filled out my form. Okay, then maybe that's true. I don't know. I'm just saying, but, but that which I know to be true that's a, that's a good number. So you want to track the number of leads. The next is how many did you, how many leads did you call? Yeah. 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 That's a biggie. So anybody out there, if you've ever been on like a diet or you're trying to fix your accounting or anything you, you care about, you have to track the numbers. Yeah. If you don't, you just sort of drift. So you got to track how many leads you called. And yeah. then I would recommend you track the monetization. I really do. Because if, if you're not spending time with family and you're not making money, it's like a hobby then. Yeah. Right. But if it's like a, a job, you need to be able to find some way to pay your bills with it. And so right. as an example, I've got one partner this week, Marty, Marty, it's so funny, but this guy, what he does is he provides um, treatments and therapies for those that have COVID-19, flu, anything. Okay. You don't know who this person is. Okay. I bet I don't. No, I'm serious. You don't. This is, this is okay. something you don't know. Okay. Good. And I was laughing because they sent me a commission report of how much commission I had generated through my promo code. And it is less than $30. Now this huh. person's been beaten down my door to have me recommend their stuff. Okay. And to their credit, they provide effective treatments and therapies. Yeah. But I'm going, I, if I'm generating $30 total and I've been on your show now twice, yeah, I can't keep doing it. Yeah. And the person said, well, it's hard to track in our industry, you know, so I probably have a lot more. I mean, I go, have you had a lot more since I've been on your show? Oh, yeah, a ton of it. However, if you want to be an equity partner in our brand, we could do it that way. And I'm going, so no. you haven't paid me a commission and now you want me to be an equity partner? No, no. So that there's you just got to tra track because if it doesn't work, you got to move on. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, so I was blessed to be able to shadow you, which was amazing. And as part of our um, business school and being a, a, yeah. a person that's working with your team. And that was en enlightening, obviously, because you like, what time do you get up in the morning and when do you finish? Well, three today, but I, most days I try to go to bed at nine and wake up at three. That's that's my flow. But I'm not saying that's good or bad. Um, I know like my, my partner, Dr. Zellner, he likes to stay up till midnight and get going around nine. But you have to find a sustainable rhythm that works for you. And I find that. I cannot have a coherent thought <laughs> at all after 9 p.m. Because at my house, how it works is that's when, like, the kids are home. Someone always has a burning fire. And it, it will go on till midnight if I don't go to bed. So I'm like, 9 o'clock threshold, I'm going to bed. Why? Because you all are going to wake up much later than me tomorrow, and I'm the one that earns the income. I'll yeah. see you guys tomorrow. So I, I come home at six, I'll hang out. I'm all about it. But at nine o'clock, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to bed. That's just my family flow. Then I wake up at three and nobody's calling me at three. No, no drama, no issue. <laughs> no one's calling me. No, Rod, no one's okay. late to work yet. None of that. Now That's start, great. About, start about eight though. People start calling. Hey, I'm late to work. You know, people start having issues. People <laughs> start getting all fired up. So I, I like to, to me, the banging doesn't stop until 9 p.m. I go to bed at nine, wake up at three, and got that four-hour window, five-hour window. Ooh, mass productivity. Awesome. So 
I am so honored to have both of you. What a blessing. So I would love for you guys to tell people what's next and where do they follow you? And well, for me, I don't know what's next. I do not know what's next. We'll just see what God wants me to do every day. I wake up and ask that question. And hopefully I'm um, doing my what I can to help save this nation as it relates to Marty. Marty, maybe you you know what you're doing next. I don't know. I know that yeah. we're going to the reawaken tour in yes, May. Absolutely. I know that. I know that today the re the, the hotel, uh, the, the Trump Doral emailed and said, you guys have there's more pe they, they, they've sold more hotel rooms to the uh, reawaken America tour in Miami or, than they've ever sold for any event ever. Wow. Related to one event Here, by far. Here's they're now, your sign. Here's they're now your reaching sign. out to other hotels saying, can we work with you guys on a deal? So I, th th they just emailed me, said, we've set the record by far. Wow. And that's in May. And they said, could you guys do another one in September? Because it's their biggest thing they've ever done ever at the Trump oh, wow. the <laughs> Hotel in my, or the resort in Miami, the Trump Doral. And then the hotel in Las Vegas, in which is in August, the Trump International, they have also said that we are on pace to set the record for the most hotel rooms they've ever booked ever for any event. So wow. you have two of those. Incredible. I don't know what will happen because if the if the Trump family wants us to do future events there, yeah, and I can sort of set up shop mm -hmm. and just do Vegas and Florida back to back, that would eliminate a lot of variables. No. If I could just do Vegas or Florida every couple months, wouldn't that be great? Just <laughs> Vegas or Florida. Yeah. That that's a thing, but maybe not. Because that feels like a thing, but maybe that's not a thing. I don't know. Marty, what do you, what's, what's the future so for you? I endeavor to follow the ghost with the most, the Holy Ghost. And so yeah. he's just recently told my wife and I to begin Tulsa Healing Revival. He's been dealing mm -hmm. with me for about a year. We've been doing loud mouth prayer. We're starting loud mouth prayer and healing. So March the 25th, we're having Amanda Grace in town because Clay's got her coming already. Awesome. And she's going to join us. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use Amen. her too. She's going to come because we minister a lot together. Amanda's coming. And on March 25th, a whole day healing revival right here in Tulsa and every month we'll have different guests in. Love it. we're talking to Julie Green we're so talking good. to a lot of a lot of different people every once a month a huge Tulsa healing revival we're going to grab what's going on in the nation and we're going to get it going on here and can I okay. say something that's not prophetic I'm not prophetic but I, but I think it's pretty powerful yes. yes Marty and I were talking about two three weeks ago yeah yeah and I was telling Marty this um there's a call on his life to do big things yes and sometimes in our world, we mm. don't see it or we don't see how big it could be. Mm. And just a little nudge sometimes help, yeah. helps. And I've watched Marty this year just put so many things that I think you've been marinating on for 10 years. You went to Bible yeah. college. You've yeah. been thinking about it. You're a roofer. Yeah. You, you're running your business. And it's like, how's God going to use your voice? And I'm just seeing like... <laughs> And as these churches refuse to do prayer healing, they won't lay hands on you because they're afraid of oh, social do distancing. Um, I think what's yeah. happened is is that there's an opening right now yeah. that you can go right through. It's yeah. almost like it's a football game. Quarterback hikes the ball. There's a hole as wide as can be. Yes. Hand the ball to Marty and boom. Yes. And I just think sometimes that this – we get in a place where we don't take action because we're waiting for everything to be just right. Yeah. yeah. And we know that once you hit that hole, there's going to be a linebacker. There's going to be somebody trying to tackle you. We don't know what that's going to be like though, yeah, yeah. but we have to run that ball. And it's so exciting to see Marty just, yeah. whoop, it's just, I, I'm, I'm excited to see the end zone dance. Yeah. Hey, man. I mean, what a, what a blessing and what an honor for me. And I just want to say thank you to Clay Clark and to Marty Grisham and, um, for all of you that have listened, please check out this on Setting Yourself Free podcast and follow katie-huff.com. That is again, katy-huff.com. One last time from my coach, katy-huff.com to learn more about the book, the coaching, the podcasts, and the retreats that we're going to have. And I just want to say thank you and God bless you both for being such an amazing um, champion for God's will in all of our lives and setting our country free and setting the people free with prayers and just um, all that God has for us. So God bless you. Thank you. No, thank you. And if you'll send me when we hop off with later today, if you'll send me the file, I'll repost this on our channel too, so it can reach more people. I really do appreciate you. That would be awesome. And what does boom stand for, by the way? Big, overwhelming, optimistic momentum. Big, overwhelming, optimistic momentum. Three, two, one. Boom. boom. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank you.